everyone, my name is Alex. I like to sew. I've been sewing for exactly two years now, and throughout these two years, I feel as though I've made a lot of stumbles along the way. But finally now, I feel like I'm actually able to sew. It's been a long time going, but I feel as though I've reached a point where I'm able to put a basic sewing pattern together and actually be able to do it right. I started sewing in the summer of 2018 when I wanted to make a twin inverted pleat skirt. I've had a dream about this skirt for years now. I saw this skirt in freshman year of high school and for years now I've wanted to make this skirt. I don't think it even registered at the time that I wanted this skirt, it was just like over the course of the years. I've just wanted this skirt more and more. And finally in 2018 I decided enough was enough. I couldn't find it online so I was going to make it myself. So I found a pattern on Amazon that was close enough to what I wanted. It wasn't exactly the skirt that I remembered seeing, but it was close enough that I would be able to buy this pattern and get something that would fulfill the need for the skirt that I had. <laughs> the pattern itself was similar to the vague image of the skirt that I had in my head, but it wasn't completely perfect. I'm pretty sure the skirt that I wanted had a waistband, which I actually just found a pattern that was more similar to it. Even though it's longer than the pattern that I remember, it's actually a good length for me because I like knee length A-line skirts more so than anything shorter. So it was good for all intents and purposes. So like any good sewist, before I actually looked to YouTube or perhaps a sewing class, I got the pattern straight from Amazon and I started cutting my regular ready to wear size. I found this lovely quilting cotton from Hobby Lobby, I was so happy, and I didn't follow the pattern instructions. Not at all. It was a complete disaster. I made up my own instructions and I changed the pattern. I added a waistband because I wanted a waistband and I tried making it longer in the waist. It just, it, no. It took me like six versions of the skirt until I finally got a wearable garment. Where I finally gave in and actually followed the pattern and the instructions, I actually went to a sewing class and I actually measured myself to the back of the pattern to finally get a proper fit. At the end though, I loved the results that I had and I was really happy that I finally made a wearable garment of the skirt that I have been dreaming of for years. Recently though, I've been noticing some frayed bits of the skirt and it just isn't up to par for the sewing that I'm actually proud to wear myself. When I'm wearing it, it looks fine and I'm happy to be wearing it, but it just isn't up to par with my standards that I have for myself. I know that it's perfect and everything, but it just, it feels like it's going to fall apart every time I'm wearing it and every time I wash it. So I decided to make a new one and retire this first skirt from my wardrobe. It might be that I'm just being overly critical of myself, but I feel like I can do more now that I've learned how to actually put a pattern together and sew straight lines and stuff. So back in April this year, I made another skirt of this pattern and I used some scrap fabric that I had from this pant pattern that I put together. Now the pants themselves, I actually tore apart them to make this skirt because they just didn't turn out right. I'm not up to making pants yet. Uh, maybe later this year I'll be able to actually make some decent pants, but they just were good. So I was able to piece together the pattern because I know how to piece together patterns at least. <laughs> And I made this skirt and I was actually really, really proud of what it looks like. If it's perfect and I feel like it's a lot better constructed and a lot sturdier than the first skirt that I made. So this got me thinking, if I can make a better skirt after doing it so many times and after so many months of experience, what if I make the same pattern over and over again and see if I'm able to improve over the span of like a month or two. I'm going to make three pencil skirts over the next couple of videos where I use the same pattern and try to improve over these by looking at the footage that I take and looking at the skirt that I construct and seeing what parts I should do differently the next time to get a better skirt. So I'm going to be critiquing myself along the way. I'm not trying to be harsh with myself but I want to be critical so that I can do something different the next time. I'm proud of myself that I'm able to make these garments and I'm hoping that I'm able to improve and be even prouder of myself when I make more garments. 
maybe someone that's watching this video can see a different perspective of what someone's actually thinking when they're making their garment and what critiques are they giving themselves when they're making it. So I'm hoping with each garment that I make, I'll be able to get better and improve as I go on because practice makes perfect, right? Now, I'm on my own here, so I'm just going to be judging myself and I'm probably not going to get every single thing that I could possibly improve and I mean, I, I don't really know much about sewing to begin with. There's no one in my life that's really advanced in sewing. So it's just me thinking narrow-mindedly of what I could do better that I actually know I could. So if you, the viewer, are watching this and see something that you could give me helpful advice with, I would be really grateful. I won't get offended with what anyone says because I know it's just constructive criticism. Like, feel free to roast me, I'll, I'll be fine. So now that we've gotten all that out of the way, let's get into the actual content of this video. This is Future Me right now. Hi, I've already made the skirt. I love it, it's great and I'm going to be handing this over to Pass Me to give you a very insightful and accurate description of what fabric that I'm going to be using today. <laughs> so, I got some remnant fabrics. I got these fabrics from Gail Kay in Atlanta and they aren't the biggest of pieces, but I'm going to try my best. This one is, I think, I think it's a wool? Yeah, I think these two are wool and this one is more of like a woven plaid. I think, I mean they're all woven, but this one's more like a, what is this? I really don't know what any of these are, but I think these two are wools and then this one's more like a, some sort of cotton suiting maybe, I have no idea, but this piece of fabric costs $2, this one costs $6, and this one was $4. There's actually not a lot of fabric to any of these. This is the one that I'm going to be working with today. This is the entirety of the fabric. There is no fold to this fabric. It's wool. It's definitely wool. I've washed it. It's wool. Also, there is a fold. Alright, so today I'm going to be working on Simplicity 4038. So I used a skirt that I had in my ready-to-wear wardrobe, and I measured it against the fabric to make sure that it was wide enough to cut out the fabric. And then I measured it against the pattern pieces that I had, and to shorten the pattern pieces, I just folded it and used washi tape to hold the pattern pieces in place. I also used tape against the dart lines so that they would hold together since I've used this pattern before. So I set up my sewing machine with the correct thread, and I put it on a normal straight stitch that I would use to sew. I proceeded to sew all the darts I labeled on my pattern. I had to unpick a dart or two, but that was easily fixed. After that, I basted the vent together in the back so it could be ironed easily later. I then finished the back of the vent with the overlocker because I knew that it would be better beforehand to do. I then realized I basted the wrong line and I need to baste in the seam allowance instead of just in the corner of the vent, so I redid that. Then, since I got it right, I just went right into stitching the center back together. Now I went in and completed the back bend by sewing a line so that it hides the overlocking stitches. Now this is the part of why I needed to finish the back bend because it does this horizontal line from edge to the seam allowance. So in order to actually make sure that it stitches properly, it needs to be already folded. I always have this problem where I forget which are the front facing, which are the back facing, and I tried my best to figure out which one was correct, but it, it turns out I was wrong. Whatever, it doesn't really make that much of a difference, it's just where the facing falls if it matches up with the waistline or not. So I stitched the facing closed at one side because the other side is going to be where the 
zipper is, so it needs to be open. And then I finished it with the overlocker and sewing a line. Now this was a step that I actually hadn't done when I completed this skirt before because I didn't read the instructions well. I have that reoccurring problem. But this just entailed sewing a line on the outside of the fabric so that the bend stays closed and I really like how it turned out. Then I stitched the sides of the skirt together, connecting the front to the back, and I left room for the zipper on one side. I then based it on my zipper with a line that was a bit farther away from the zipper teeth because I don't really like working with pins when doing my zipper, so I find this is a helpful step for myself. And then I stitched the zipper on close as I could. I actually knew in advance that I would have trouble doing the bottom of the zipper, so I didn't really do it as accurately as I could because it's hard to do it on the machine. So I'm going to actually hand stitch the zipper more in the end and that should give it a good look. I then stitch an extra line at the edge of the zipper tape because I find that the zipper tape likes to flop around when I move it up and down, so I find this is good for securing it down to the fabric. I attached the pacing to the waistband next. My thread decided to get caught up in the bottom area about halfway through, so I fixed everything and got all the thread sorted out. I decided to start from the beginning again because my seam allowance just didn't seem right and I wanted it to be as smooth as possible. So then I followed the same steps as I did with the skirt and I put together the lining. First, I stitched all the darts. I stitched together the center back and I actually stopped where the vent was and I used my scissors and I cut off the vent so that I can just finish the edge right there. I attached the sides of the skirt together and I left room for the zipper. And there is always an interlude for a cat that must help me with my sewing. As you can see, the cat bed got moved up close to my sewing machine because she had to be with me at that time. So then I finished all the edges of the lining with the overlocker, leaving the top for when I actually attach it to the skirt. And I used my pins and I folded the zipper and the vent in the back so that it would be easy to finish it with a sewing machine so that it will all look nice from the outside and there won't be any overlock shown from the inside of the skirt. So this is how I finish the edges of the overlock stitch. I fold over the stitches and I just sew a line to keep it down. So since I overlocked the zipper opening and the vent opening separately and then fold it together so that it lays flat, it's easy to get this in the sewing machine so it looks nice from the outside. So then I attached the lining to the inside of the seam allowance at the waistband. I didn't feel like sewing and I don't really feel that's necessary so it's easy just to attach the lining inside the seam allowance. I accidentally turned one of my darts the wrong way but oh well. And this is what the lining looks like when you open it up. Looks perfect to me. Should sit well. It's sturdy enough that will stay there. Then I understitched the waistband and the seam allowance. It won't catch the lining or anything because there's enough room in the seam allowance, plus I don't really think it'll matter all that much. I just used the thread that I had on my sewing machine. I forgot to turn it to black, but it really doesn't matter what color it is. I mean, if you want it to be contrast, then go for it. No one's gonna see it, it's just understitching. So 
so then since I had overlocked all of the skirt around, I overlocked the hem of the skirt and then I flipped that over. I'm going to be hand stitching the hem, so I like just to make sure it looks neat from the inside as well. So this is what the waistband assembly looks like from the inside. I think it looks very crisp and polished, if I do say so myself. And this is the vent from the inside view. Nice and flat, nice and finished. And that's how my lining turned out right there. So now I have to go to the zipper again and get my hand stitching done. And this is what the lining also looks like. As you can see, it's also finished in the same way. So I'm just going to be hand stitching like the bottom half of the zipper. And in order to do this, I am back stitching by hand. I'm trying to get as close as I can to the zipper teeth from underneath the zipper tape and then just going back and forth until I get to the bottom. As you can see, the finish it gives on one side is a lot better than what I did on the other side. I actually like this method more than using the machine, although it was hard for me to actually figure out how to do this at first. But I think for next time, I'm actually going to face stole my zipper by machine and then get close-ish when I stitch the zipper, but I think I'm actually going to hand stitch the entire zipper length because I found that this finish actually gave it a lot better and more professional look. I don't really find the invisible zipper foot to give that much of an advantage over just using the regular zipper foot. It's more complicated to use anyway. Next, I sewed the lining down to the zipper tape. I gave it a little bit of room between the zipper tape so it doesn't get caught or anything. Then I tacked down the facings at the zipper, at the other side of the waistband, and at the middle. I just did a couple stitches and that keeps it tacked down. So then I ironed the hem where I want it to be and I slip stitched it all around. I stitched down part of the lining in the back where the vent was so that it wouldn't move around too much and it would stay in place. And that's it. I finished my skirt and I think it looks pretty good. My notes for next time are I'm going to hand stitch more of the zipper and see if I can actually remember what facing pieces I have. I want to lengthen the pencil skirt a little bit more because even though I'm fine with this length, I think it would be more comfortable to make it a little bit longer. And actually trying to keep my lines straight when I'm tacking down the overstitch to finish the edges because I feel as though they're a bit wonky for me mainly because I don't pay attention when I'm actually sewing them. I'm watching TV. I want to lengthen the skirt a little bit because even though I'm fine with this length, I feel as though I'd be a little bit more comfortable if it was just a little bit longer. I'm definitely not going to machine wash any of my fabric next time because I think it would be better to have it be direct clean only because wool. I mean, I don't usually wash wool anyway, but I just didn't know for this fabric. Oh well, it'll be fine. I have a wool skirt that I've um, washed in the past and it still fits fine. Those are all my thoughts for now. If I have any more, I'll include them in the next video. But for now, hope you guys have a great day. Follow me on Instagram at whisperedmoon with three O's. I hope you guys all enjoy your week. Bye.